Okay, uh, the brothers Lau, Zian, Zivei, um, first of all, I want to just say um, well done on your work. Um, I've been to your website. I've done some of the reading on your uh, stuff that you've done. I love the fact that you are trying to disrupt the jewellery industry. I myself have bought um, jewellery before in the past. I've been to the diamond shops. I don't like what I paid. I don't like the process. I think there's something wrong with the system. I like the fact that you guys are saying that you're trying to disrupt it. Let's start at the start, uh, guys, and uh, maybe you can tell me how you started in this industry. Okay, um, how we started in, the, in this industry is actually is quite, a, quite a journey, uh, I would say. Because, uh, first of all, my brother actually uh, working in uh, Lebanon as a gemologist and also an uh, appraiser uh, and also a, a jewelry designer in Lebanon. But uh, as you know, um, Lebanon is actually quite a safe country, but you know, surrounding the country is uh, a bit uh, messy, I would say. So my parents is a little bit uh, worried for uh, being safety in uh, Lebanon, right? So um, they actually asked me, you know, what can we do, you know, uh, to, to bring Zin back here, you know. But the thing about um, being a gemologist is that Zin do not want to be, because in Malaysia, if you are a gemologist, uh, um, chances of you, um, uh, what you're doing is that you become a salesperson in like, uh, say, uh, Hong Kong or, or, you know, other retail store. Uh, that, is, that is one of the steps for a gemologist in Malaysia uh, to start. So he do not want to, to go through that. He want to go through a more experience like going to the diamond mines and things like that to actually experience the whole journey of uh, uh, the diamond process. So at that time, I just uh, bought my ring uh, from one of the retailers, right? So I give him a call and I uh, ask him, hey, uh, I bought this uh, 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 diamond for my, for my uh, wife. You know, um, I want to propose. Uh, how much does it cost? Uh? Uh, if let's say you, um, I mean, just curious question to ask, you know, how much does it cost uh, to actually buy the, the, the actual diamond, you know, direct from the source? When he told me the price, I was uh, really surprised or amazed with the big margin that the retail uh, have. So then uh, I started doing more research. I started to uh, understand more about the diamond industry with Zin, and both of us actually uh, discussed. And he told me that in the state or in Europe, it is very normal for people to actually buy diamonds online. When I heard about that, I'm, I I become a uh, very curious. How can this uh, actually happen? You know, you are talking about buying like uh, items because our average purchase in our company is around ten thousand. So you're talking about buying something 10,000 online. It's like unthinkable at that time. Uh, so I, when I did uh, more research on, on this matter, then I found out because previously I'm also an uh, auditor, right? Uh, and I have uh, audited uh, a retailer before. And I know the cost structure of uh, the company and how the company actually works. And... and um, me looking back at some of the things that I have done for the retailer and looking at how the whole industry is being structured, I noticed that it, there is a fundamental force, force, uh, force uh, in this uh, whole industry because consumer is no longer paying for commodity. They are actually paying for the brand name which do not add any value to the commodity. So, for example, if you were to buy a, a gold bar, right? Gold bar, they do have a lot of brand, but the brand does not actually uh, contribute to the actual pricing of the gold commodity. Or make it even at a more simpler term, you know, uh, if you pump shell, shell, uh, I mean, petrol is also a commodity, but if you buy shell or petronas, right? Even Shell is a foreign brand or more established brand, you don't pay more because it is a commodity. So this is the mindset that we have uh, when we want to um, bring diamond back uh, uh, to the commodity level. You know, uh, that is the way, that is how we actually think about it and how we started. Because what we found out is that if we can directly import the diamond 
and uh, do not pay those additional costs like for example your rentals and uh, uh, your your um, uh, salary for, for all the staffing insurance and also the most important is to keep the stock because the one of the highest costs for retailer is to have inventory on hand yeah that is that is how we do our journey let's say to, to actually reach so how do you address that how do you um, how do you overcome that because i know you sell so, predominantly online um okay yeah. well, how, how do you buy the stock or do you buy it on order from your suppliers so what's the so basically uh basically when it comes to uh ordering the product supplier will actually prefer us to buy it per pieces instead of us taking a uh, consignment because uh, one diamond is graded based on date. So there's a date on the certificate when it's disgraded. So a lot of people has this uh, stigma where they say, oh, you know, your diamond is six months old, uh, one year old. They think it's a, a second hand or it's used diamond. So instead of them trusting a new company that, oh, you will sell all this consignment stock, they say, you know, if you want to have this consignment, then you have to pay this particular premium. So this is something that we, put into consideration, like, hey, why do I have to pay premium if I'm helping you to sell the stock? So they said that, you know, some uh, retailers, especially new retailers, they don't know what kind of uh, revenue they can generate, especially uh, they are new. Lah. So instead of that, they were they say that, you know, we buy per pieces, I'll give you this particular price. And then if you buy at a certain value, then it's free. Uh, I'll give you at a certain discount as well. So they will prefer you oh, buy oh, per oh. pieces instead of taking a stock. To answer your question, how we overcome this, right, is that we integrate all these uh, suppliers' inventory into our website. So basically, when you are when you are browsing our website, right, when you are looking at the diamonds, right, you are actually looking at the actual suppliers' inventory live. So all the top um, diamond supplier in the world. I'm talking about top five diamond supply in the world. Their inventory system is in our website. So when you're browsing, you're actually browsing the, the live inventory for our uh, from our supplier. So if the, our supplier sold the diamond, it will be reflected on our uh, website. So this gives us uh, the advantage uh, of having almost uh, 200,000 diamonds, right? Without the need of inventory to pay. Okay. So that, that is a one of the main advantage. On top of that, if you do not need to hold inventory, right, you also do not need to pay the kind of high premium insurance. And also you do not need to you do not need to force sell. You see how you, you sometimes you go to a retail they will tell you, you know, um, to they will recommend you diamond based on what they have, not based on what actually a diamond should be. Okay, so what about the other aspects of a successful jewelry business? The brand is very important, right? Uh, you got to trust the, the retailer, right? Tiffany, whatever, right? Um, De Beers. How are you going to overcome that? Because it takes a long time. In some cases, centuries. Yeah, I, I, I do agree, you know. Um, the reputation uh, of the brand is very important. So... So for us, even when we started uh, uh, Zakoa, right, uh, that is the number one thing that we concentrate at, uh, is to ensure that uh, our customer trust us. So we do a lot of education. We don't do a lot of advertising on, on uh, buying diamonds, but we do a lot of education on uh, why you need to buy diamond uh, as a commodity than uh, as a brand itself. Because I understand, let's say for example, Tiffany, they have their, their bracelet and things like that, that is uniquely theirs. And that is like IP, they have like, you know, IP on it. That, that one, I, I do understand why do you pay premium for that because of the design and things like that. But when you come to diamonds, it is a commodity, right? So like if you go to Cartier, they also sell you GIA diamond. Zakova also sell GIA diamond. And this diamond come from the same supplier. You, you, that, that, that is the difference, you know. 
Because if you're talking about design wise, yes, uh, that one totally understandable why you need to charge premium. But when you come to commodity, right, you should, shouldn't, uh, uh, consumer shouldn't pay a premium for it. Okay. So what about the most important thing for any business? It's about funding, right? You still need financing to run the operations and to start the business. How did you address yep. that in the early days? So how we design our company is to ensure that uh, we have a minimum capital outlay. So what we do is that we uh, usually when a customer were to buy the, the diamond, we ask them to either pay full or pay 70%. Then with that, we are able to purchase the diamond. So that will reduce our, our uh, need of uh, intense capital outlay. What about the other aspects? Um, obviously, you would need to design your website. You need to design the back end, um, the whole infrastructure. Yeah, so we do it. We do it. We do it very, very gradually. So at the beginning, uh, our website is just a one pager. So uh, um, and I think at the beginning, uh, a lot of those marketing effort and things like that is also done by Zine itself. So when we when we make uh, more money, then we started to you know revamp our website. We started to have our office and things. Like things goes very very gradually. So we didn't have any like uh, uh, outside funding or or a VC that fund us uh, till until last year. So you are literally a, a bootstrap business, lah. You have started it from scratch with no outside yeah. help, your own money, all the way. Yep. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, yeah, yes. Fantastic. All Fantastic. Time. How many years already so far? Five years. I think coming to six years. Uh. Fantastic. These are sixty. Yeah. Wow. So how? So in terms of just the difficulties, lah. Right. You have to believe in the in the idea. It's it's tough, right? Maybe money sometimes is tight. Sometimes you got bills to I pay. Think, I think yes, it is. Uh, you know, it is really tough. I think at one point. Uh, at one point, we, uh, you know, contemplating whether to, to actually, you know, do this ad or actually pay salary, pay our own salary, uh, Z salary, you know, things like that. And and for that, that six years until now, I I do not draw any salary from uh, Zokowa, right? Is to ensure that uh, Zokowa use the money to maximize our uh, expansion, right? So. Yes, it is. Uh, it is tough, especially, especially. Uh, we want to uh, uh, let people know that you know buying diamond online is okay. Even at the beginning, when we started this business, it is very difficult. What about you, Zin? What What about you in terms of um, you? You know, you leaving the Middle East and then you coming out here, starting this business. Yeah. Um, it's not easy, right? It's not been easy. How How have you it's, handled I the think challenges? It's, it's, it's very, I think it's very difficult. It's a big change for me because uh, one, I'm starting my own business. So I need to know the in and outs of the accounts. So I have to learn accounts. I have to learn the business side of the thing. So I have to learn it from Zwei as well. So whatever it is, like, you know, the financing part, uh, things I have, to, I have to spend and you know, I have to cut costs, you know, things that I have to learn from scratch. Because when I was in Middle East, I'm pretty much like, um, I would say like a boss of my own. Because I, if I report directly to my, to my boss, so a lot of things, it's I have control over it. But over here, back here, I have to learn everything from scratch again. Basically, I have to learn how to deal with customer, you know, do sales, how to sell, how to convince customer to buy jewelry online. That one, it's a very difficult, uh, it's a very difficult step for us because it's something so new in Malaysia that we don't know what is the reception for customer. That's why we did, we did everything very gradually, especially when it comes to website. The first website is a one pager. So basically, if customer have requests, you're putting a request, then I will sort out the diamond for them. Then I would I will explain to them why they should pick this diamond, you know, what, what they should look out for. And then gradually we will see what kind of changes we the the whole, I would say the whole industry in Malaysia works. You know, certain things we see like, oh, you know, uh, especially in Asian country, there's still one the Communication between a salesperson and a customer, that is still very important in, I would say, in Asian market as well. So instead of us doing completely online, we do everything made to order. So basically, customer at any uh, point in the sales, customer has to speak to us. So we still have that connection between a salesperson and a customer. So that way, it actually gives it 
easier for us to adapt to a new environment. Yeah, mm-hmm. I went to your website, Zian. I saw that you can get a one carat diamond and sometimes 25,000 or sometimes 30,000 depending, depending on the cut, right? It's not cheap. Yes. <laughs> so yes. What, what do you tell people about yeah. you know, comforting them about buying a diamond online? It's a lot of money, man. I think, I think buying it's a lot of money. Online, I mean, right? if the thing is, uh, it's, it's yeah, buying, 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 buying diamond online. Yeah, I think right? buying um, diamond especially is a, it is a better way of buying diamonds. The fact is this, right? That is what we are trying to educate people. Because a lot of time, um, when um, purchasers to the, they buy diamond for inventory purposes, right? they don't see the actual diamond. Because seeing the actual diamond, there's a lot of variables. Lighting variables, your condition, what time of the day yeah. you're looking at the diamond. But you look at the picture itself, it is a controlled environment. So a lot of times, buyer buy two pictures. I think, yeah, I think a lot of times, like customer will ask, like, hey, you know, how do you tell a customer that the diamond is good or bad? So the, the thing is, uh, I would say I can I can guarantee that. There isn't anyone that has the luxury to say, hey, you know, I, I want this particular diamond. Can you send in uh, maybe 10 pieces of your diamond and let me choose? And then I can uh, uh, propose to my customer. Things like that. Uh, a lot of suppliers, they wouldn't do it unless you get a full payment. Second of all, if let's say a certain country, they have duty and tax for the diamond, right? Doesn't matter if you do a temporary import, you still have to pay the tax. So a lot of retailers wouldn't want to pay tax knowing that, you know, I only going to sell two of the diamond and the rest I need to send it back. So we do not have that kind of luxury to see the diamond first. So instead of that, we look through pictures and videos. So whatever our customers see is what us as a buyer see as well. So if you tell me, uh, Zian, as a customer, um, you're going to be mm. buying the order yep. that diamond online from your supplier, what is the risk of my diamond yes. not coming to Malaysia? You know customs sometimes, right? Or th- things go missing, right? What, are, what is the risk yep, of that? Yep, yep. Okay, so the risk is very minimal because diamonds and any uh, high-end jewelries, they have specialty uh, career service. So even though, that, uh, even though we send things through FedEx, but instead of insured by FedEx, we have another company called Malka Amit Brings of Ferrari. Three of these company they only uh, insured high value item. So, for example, your your old bars, uh, your art pieces from auction houses. These are all handled by companies like that. Malka Amit brings a Ferrari. So Malka Amit actually partner up with FedEx. So FedEx will transport all their uh, jewelries, but it will be insured by Malka Amit. So Malka Amit will insure it. Uh, I think fifty to sixty thousand US dollars. So anything that is above that, it will be a specialty uh, career service, which is handled only by Malka Amit, and they will be delivered either by Cathay Pacific or Emirates, and it won't go through FedEx. So it really depends on the value of the item as well. So how is the business mm. doing now? You, you, you're mentioning that you got some funding last year? Yes, uh, we got some uh, funding last year. And uh, I think our, I mean, in terms of uh, our business, uh, we are actually doing very well. Uh, surprisingly, after the uh, first NCO, so it is uh, growing uh, rapidly, uh, you know, this year. So, so are you guys profitable yet, or do you expect to be profitable soon? And what's the plan? Yeah, we are already, we are already profitable. Uh, uh quite quite long ago, quite long ago. Uh, that's why we are able to bootstrap for so many years. Right. So our our plan is uh, this year is really to also uh, to introduce gemstones in this uh, manner where uh, you are able to view the gemstones on the three sixties and being categorized accordingly because gemstones have been very fragmented in the market and uh, a lot of our customer asking us why don't we do it like the diamonds. So we've been like listening to a feedback and things like that. And uh, Zin is uh, able to actually find uh, uh, gemstones that are being categorized like that. So this is one of our new, it is uh, actually very new. Yeah, it's, it sounds like quite a good fit between two of you. Ziwei, you are the kind of like the business numbers guy. Zin is the, the expertise guy, the guy who does the selection and knows about the, the diamond yeah. industry. Um, 
Are you guys okay? I mean, yeah. it's it's quite challenging to work with family, though, right? How, how are you dealing with it? I think I think this is the one of the one of the best uh, decision I have made. You know, to actually uh, bring Zin back, and uh, I think a lot of uh, people also asking me the same question: How is it working with your brother? But the thing is that both of us have a very uh, unique uh, specialty, la. We, we don't we I won't challenge him about uh, diamonds and uh, jewelry. I guess he also won't challenge me about finance and things like that. So yeah. it is quite peaceful, I think la, because... in a sense. <laughs> Yeah, I think because both of us have to learn from each other because my brother, of course, he's from the business point of view. So I have to learn business, the business, um, all the in and out. And then, of course, he have to learn about the diamond, the jewelry, of course, the operational part as well. So I think we complement each other because I don't, we don't question each other unless we have something that we want to bring up, like, you know, such certain ideas that we think it will fit. And then we will discuss about it. So we don't have any, I would say, um, difficulty in working with each other. Lah. Oh, this oh, it's quite easy as well. Wow. Well, good luck. Good luck. I'm, I'm really honestly, genuinely interested to see you guys succeed. I love the fact that you are really um, taking the game to the middleman. Um, and really, I, I think that sometimes, you know, they are, they're not doing the consumer justice. La. They're not doing the customer justice. I love the fact that you're doing it and good luck. Thank you.